submissions to the Pulitzer Prize public service category dropped 43% from 1984 to 2010. Coverage of Washington, 27 states have no Washington reporters. The numbers of papers with bureaus uh, in D.C. are down by about a half since the mid-1980s. And there's my old beat, religion. I asked Deborah Mason, the head of the Religion News Writers Association, how things were going since I left. She said simply, oh, religion news at the local level is nearly gone. Now, it's not always the case that beats are entirely eliminated. In many cases, what's happened is that the beats remain, but the reporters uh, doing them are stretched thinner, where once they covered two counties, now they're covering four, or once they did one story a day, now they do a print version and a blog post and, and a bunch of tweets. The Columbia Journalism Review described this as life on the hamster wheel. This being a government report, I tried to bureaucratize the language a little bit, and we referred to this as the hamsterization trend. <laughs> um, and as cute as the image is, the consequences are really very serious. For instance, the Kaiser Family Foundation did a study of health coverage, concluded that interest in health coverage is up. The number of health reporters is down, which has led, in their view, to, quote, a loss of in-depth enterprise and policy-related stories. Same thing in education. Uh, reporters are overextended. Richard Colvin, formerly of the Heckinger Institute, said, quote, local coverage is not likely dropped in volume, but it is certainly dropped in ambition. Those who cover education may not do so full time and don't have the leeway to write much of substance. So to use the metaphor of the media landscape, which we do a lot in this report, we actually have many ways of looking out at the landscape and describing what we see, but we have less time to turn over the rocks and look in the shadows. One of the most surprising findings for us is that despite the empowering nature of digital tools, and we have seen digital tools help to bring down governments, uh, we have also seen a countervailing shift, a shift of power away from citizens towards institutions. Uh, the Pew uh, study of Baltimore uh, wrote, as news is posted faster, often with little enterprise reporting ad added, the official version of events is becoming more important. We found official press releases often appear word for word in first accounts of events, though not often noted as such. Government, at least in this study, initiates most of the news. One PR professional explained, quote, newsrooms have been gutted, and particularly at the local level, journalists rely on press releases to help them fill the ever-increasing news hole. They were actually viewed this as a positive, not as a negative. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think the rest of us might be worried about it. Now, one of the writing challenges of this report is how do you illustrate the impact of stories not written, proving a negative? So we looked for indi indirect hints of, of this. So Bell, California, I'm sure you're familiar with this case, the chief administrative officer getting paid $787,000. The LA Times uh, broke the story, actually won a Pulitzer Prize for it in June of 2010. But the excessive payments began at least as far back as 2005. So the loss of taxpayers was at least $5.6 million from the fact that there was no one covering the Bell City Council. Several publications uh, reported brilliantly on the Upper Big Branch mine disaster in West Virginia. They reported that they had uh, 1,342 serious safety violations in five years. But we are left to wonder whether the 29 people who died in that disaster might still have been alive if newspapers or TV stations had done the same reporting before the accident that they did after the accident. I was probably most touched by the people in communities trying to solve local problems, not by the journalists, but the civic leaders, citizens, who need the information to honor, uh, uh, in order to do their important work. In Michigan, for instance, the coverage of juvenile courts has gotten uh, smaller and smaller over the years, according to Vivek Sankaran of the University of Michigan, an expert on family courts. I asked him, well, you know, what, is that ma what does that matter? What are the results of that? He said, oh, um, quote, parents whose rights are terminated, who shouldn't be terminated? 
It just takes somebody to go down there to get the story, he said, but nobody is ever down there. I've mostly focused on newspapers, but what about the rest of the traditional media? We looked a lot at local TV. Uh, in one sense, you know, over the last seven years, the number of hours of local TV news has actually gone up. It's risen by 35%. And the best stations really are doing more and better than ever before because they're, ta they're combining the traditional media techniques with really fantastic user-generated content and involving the community. But on average, local TV increased the hours of coverage while reducing their staff. Bleeding is still leading. One out of three LA broadcasts led their news stories with a crime, uh, newscast with a crime story, according to Annenberg. Uh, another story, a study said that a quarter of the crime stories in the LA market were from out of town, which is really an amazing thing to think about. So even if there didn't happen to be a murder that day, they imported it <laughs> from another city. The beat system is disintegrating. There's less depth. The study of LA uh, by Annenberg said that education, healthcare, and government took ob uh, up over about a little over one minute of a 30 minute broadcast. Other key trends. TV network news staff down by half since the late 1980s. News magazine reporters staff down by almost half since the 1980s. Radio, local, national news and talk actually is growing. Local news is not. In fact, it's shrinking. The number of all news ra local radio stations has dropped, dropped from 50 in the 1980s to about 30 today. So currently about a third of the population has the benefit of an all news radio station. Local cable news. Once it looked like this really might be a very significant um, uh, addition to the media landscape, local cable news, but it appears to have plateaued at around 25 to 30 percent of the population now has access to uh, local cable news. Now this only represents a part of the story. Obviously, if the gaps in traditional media were being filled by the new media, we would have nothing to worry about. So we looked at that question next. Um, what, what is going on on the new media side? Uh, a year or so ago, you would have had traditional media folks really disparaging the internet media uh, as just about opinion mongering, the, the famous pajama clad bloggers. And that's just wrong. You know, it should be clear at this point that digital technology has in fact improved journalism in many ways. Lower barriers to entry and vast amount of space online have led actually to a greater diversity of voices, increased depths for some types of coverage, and more consumer choices. Technology has reduced the cost of gathering, producing, and distributing news, which allows for, among other things, new players who had been shut out of traditional media to get in it. Uh, reporters can use computerized databases to pull together stories and hours that would have taken weeks. Search engine driven internet has just made it much easier to find stuff out. We can get news on demand when we need it, when we're ready to consume it in real time through desktop, tablet, phone, TV, video, text, or an infinite com combination. In many ways, citizens are more empowered. They can choose where to get their content, what content to get, how to share it, uh, and they are helping to report it themselves. Um, and when you, you, to the image to me that sort of conveys how dramatically things have changed is compare some of the, the one of the most abiding images from the Vietnam War was the, the, the horrific photo of the screaming girl running away from napalm taken by a courageous Vietnamese uh, uh, war correspondent. The most indelible image recently, an Iranian woman being shot during protest, Nada Aga Sultan, was taken by a doctor on his cell phone. Had an equally powerful impact. Now most of the, site, the websites that get most attention are national, Huffington Post, uh, Politico, Daily Caller, but just as exciting are the really the hundreds of impressively creative websites on the local level, MinPost, Voice of San Diego, Texas Tribune, Bay Citizen, uh, Sacramento Press, California Watch, uh, many other uh, local operations. And, and one of the most exciting areas really is hyperlocal coverage, news on a block by block level. Because really, even in newspapers' fattest, happiest days, there was a limit to how granular they could get. Um, and now uh, you have 
citizens being able to help cover their blocks and their neighborhoods in a level, in a way that couldn't before. Now, a lot of these aren't profitable businesses necessarily, but they don't necessarily have to be. These are civic institutions, sort of a thousand points of journalism, and they're playing a really very important role. But one of the most important things we learned in this report is that an abundance of media outlets does not necessarily mean abundance of media reporting. For instance, Pew, again, studied that Baltimore media system, and they found 53 different outlets. That's a lot. Uh, it would seem like this city was suffering no shortage of journalism, but when they analyzed all the stories on city affairs, it turned out 95% of the stories, including those in the new media, were based on the reporting done by the traditional media, mostly the Baltimore Sun and one of the TV stations, and those sources were doing less than they'd done in the past. Several other studies have found the same thing. Researchers at the Neiman Labs looked at 121 distinct stories on Google News um, about a particular story relating to Google being hacked. Um, they found that only 13 of the 121 contained, quote, some amount of original reporting. Only one of those was produced by an online outlet. The other 100 plus stories were essentially rewrite summaries or links uh, done to the small number of uh, outlets. In 2009, Michigan State University did a massive study. They looked at 6,800 stories in 486 news outlets, 98 cities, 77 suburbs. They concluded that 88% of the news about city governments and 93% of the news about suburban governments came from traditional media, media, even today. Quote, this finding should give significant pause to those who believe that the new media will fill any, ga any gaps left by the old media. In other words, the proliferation of the outlets is not the same thing as an increase in reporting, and in some cases can actually camouflage a drop in reporting. It's not to say it's not valuable, it's incredibly valuable, but we should be really clear about what the benefits are and what the gaps are that still remain. Uh, now, what about these innovative websites that I've talked about? Um, really, in some ways, they're very encouraging, uh, but I guess I would say as of this moment, they have the skill, but not the scale. Uh, that was brought home when I was at a conference uh, during this process run by the Knight Foundation, which funds a lot of these organizations. And it was a very inspiring group. I mean, really, some of these are laid-off newspaper reporters who went to create these or just concerned citizens who worried about what was going on in their community. Uh, I tallied up how many full-time reporters together they all employed, and it was 88. That sounded impressive until you remind yourself that newspapers have lost 15,000 reporters in the last decade. Pointer Institute, Institute tried to put a dollar amount on this. They said that uh, new, the uh, spending on editorial and newspapers, just newspapers, has dropped by $1.6 billion annually. Uh, on the other hand, a study of foundation money going into local journalism concluded that uh, about $180 million had been put in over five years to help fill these gaps. So $1.6 billion out, $180 million in. 